as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine. We wanna chase the night.
Yes, I'm back. Hello to Crime and Justice. Right, I've been rather busy today. I've been trying to find, find the video where Chris mentioned what time he phoned law enforcement. And I can't find it. Right? But I know it. Right, we'll get onto that in a minute. Oh god, let me just alter my mic. There it is, that's better. I think I've got it right down. If I move it up. Okay, it's down. Okay. That should be okay now. I find when I've got my speaker plugged into, like I've got this USB extension port which I push into the side of my laptop and I can plug in up to four or five USB ports. When I use that like, to get to get onto my uh, my document off my one USB holder, right, it seems echoey. So I don't know what to do about that. Anyway, hopefully it is not echoing, and you can hear me nice and clear. To this, what we're talking about tonight, I know I don't want to keep focusing on Chris. I really don't. I really, really don't. I want to focus on Sebastian, but I need to get this this one thing out of my system. And that is the time that Katie called him in the morning, the time he phoned law enforcement, and the, the time that the dispatch caller said the call came through. And I've searched, I've been going through all the videos, as, as well as doing every quick lives today because I've been talking about Elijah Vu. Right, so in between doing them lives, I've been on here trying to find this information out. It's just this one clip I need and I can't find it. And um, I've gone through three interviews. Well, I know there's more, but I'm going to go on to, what was he? Oh my lord, what was that? I'll find that in me, I'll find it. <laughs> Duchess, actually. Duchess. I need to find this because it's going to bug the life out of me until I do. Been raining all day today, literally, and today my grandson, it was his birthday yesterday, and so today his mum and dad had arranged with, I think, a few of his friends, a couple of his friends from school, to meet up at this dear place in Fife, well, the other side, 
I don't think it's five. I'm not sure. So. Right, we're going to listen to this. I'm, I'm not sure if it's on this one, but I'll speed it up just a little bit because it is very slow. No disrespect to Justice because she's lovely, I love her. But she does talk really slow, but I love how she talks as well, though. But when you're trying to listen to something and you need it just a little bit faster, right? So, let's get this up on the screen first, so that you can all see it. I'm hoping this is the one where it says it calls the police, what time it called, law enforcement. Right, now this, bear in mind, this is the main interview. This is a very, very... First interview Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot ever did. The very first interview they ever did on YouTube with anyone. Everyone was looking at that one with the news reel. That wasn't the first one. This is the first interview. This one. So we're going to look at this. Let's just move my face down. And out the way, so I get in my face and start to bug the life out of me. So, I'm trying to get my phone so that I can see it still. Anyway, so we're going to just listen to this, okay? Because I know it is somewhere. Let's go right back. He said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself uh, went to bed. Okay. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, oh, it's not he going wasn't here. Me. Why is this not ringing? Jeez, but there's no sound. Oh, I know what and I'm doing. It's because I muted a video before. It's now... I have to keep going out and then coming back in sometimes. Not all the time, just sometimes. But this was on the third of March, twenty twenty four. Hold on, we've just got to go back just a little bit because we don't want to miss this. Uh, just a little bit forward. Right, right let's try Hold on. Hold on. I've got to share it with you, haven't I? Sorry. Right, we're going to 
Listen. Now you told me that night that now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch about okay. 10 o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m. And then you got up off the couch and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight. midnight. And, and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything so, seemed okay. There's actually a piece of, so to make something. Notice how when Chris said, and you told me you went to bed at midnight, she, she literally reinforced the fact that she went to bed around midnight. She said midnight. She jumped in, as Dutchie said, it, she jumped in at the same time. And very crystal clear. So that okay. way there's transparency very across the board. Clear. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments. Hold on, hold on. Why would she say me and mom were on the phone at 9.43, 9.46 that evening? Why not 9.45? Why 9.43 or 9.46? If I was speaking to my... Say I was speaking to my son and someone wanted to know what time I was speaking to him. Right? And I was speaking to him around about 9.30, 9.45. I, I wouldn't say 9.43, 9.46. I'd say I was talking to him at 9.45. You know what I mean? Why does he... I know I shouldn't be picking on him. I know, I know. I'm trying my hardest. I am trying my hardest. I'm so trying my hardest. I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to talk. I want to talk about Katie more. But I need to get this this bit of information that is bugging me and do my heading. And I need to find out what time he said he found the police. That's TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said, hey, you need to wake up, put the dogs up, go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Mm -hmm. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up, get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times. Um, mom has called me at the time and asked me, she was like, I can't find him. <coughs> said, Do what? She goes, yeah, I cannot find him. Said, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because that's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the location. And... You had told me that there hadn't been any particular situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened. And I also had asked you if there were any friends that Sebastian might have possibly left the house with or if he had any contact with anyone on social media. Do you want to comment about that again? He doesn't have a social media. Okay. Um, and the only friends that he had were a couple of kids in school. Okay. Um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We, we as parents um, know how social media can be right. and seeing how kids can be easily manipulated. Um, he's very young in mind. Yes, he may be. Right. He's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes through with autistic children, as everybody would know. Right. Um, but for the record, we I am a very strict parent. I do. He does not have social media, not in our household. He doesn't uh, online game. He, I mean, I am, I'm pretty strict that when it comes to that kind of situation. Well, that's good. That's good, Chris. That that you have. Oh yeah, you're very strict because even when he had that uh, certificate for something he did at school which was given to his father, Seth, right, at the vigil, at one of the vigils, Katie would not even. So he got this certificate before he went missing. He'd worked online and done this course and whatever, and he got this certificate for doing that. 
his mum, Katie, didn't even go up to the school to collect that certificate. Because apparently they wasn't very happy with the school, though with the fact that he was online. So you could imagine what is they are like with the father knowing that on his father's PlayStation or whatever he is he played on, Chris was one of his friends on his friends list. He used to play with Chris Sefty online. So, you could just imagine Chris and Katie being, oh, yeah, that's all right, if he's like with his daddy, he can play online. They're not going to be happy. Control with that, because social media can be very dangerous for young kids, um, because they don't realize who they may be talking to on social media. So it's always good to have that awareness and to make sure you're monitoring, you know, what your kids are doing. So I had asked you both, you know, did you have any idea what would make Sebastian want to suddenly leave the house? And you told me, well, that's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know. All the detectives, they've all asked that same question. What is it that happened that caused him to leave the house? Um, and I know you must be so worried and so concerned. Is there anything, if if Sebastian were listening to this live stream right now, if you knew that he was out there, what would you want to tell him? That we love you and to come home. You can hear it in her voice. She's really upset. She's upset. But not because this is... As I stated at the beginning of all my lives now, this is my opinion, and it's not a fact, right, it's just my opinion. She's really upset, you can hear it in her voice, but not because he, wa he walked out of that house. Even the law enforcement have said there was no evidence that he walked out of that house. No evidence. So if he didn't walk out of that house, where did he go? Right? So. Hang on. So she is upset, but not because he walked out of that house, because she knows what I, my opinion, I feel she knows more. And I feel she knows what happened that Sunday night. Something happened in that house Sunday night. And that's what that three hour phone call was for. Half nine, ten, 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 eleven, eleven. Well, two and a half hour phone call was about. Yeah. So. It made it, she is upset, but I think she's grieving. She's grieving. That's how upset she is. She's grieving. I mean, it's pretty simple. This boy has a very large family that everybody is asking the question Where are you? We love you, and please come home. Yes. We definitely need to find him as soon as possible. If you live in this area, Please search your property every day. He could be on the move. Just because you've already searched your property one time doesn't mean that you don't need to continue to search your property on a daily basis just to be sure. If you have a lot of land, it needs to be searched, you know, just to be sure because he may be lost. He may be somewhere and he doesn't, he can't find his way back. So that's why it's very critical. Can you talk to me about the search and rescue efforts? Are they searching on land, air? They also have dive teams there. What can you tell us about that? So currently, um, they, as of today, the National Guard was also brought in to help with the search. But they have had fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, um, horseback ATV side by side, um, door to door, scouring every neighborhood possible. Um, I mean, the outreach from the community and various counties has been extremely welcoming, loved. I mean, it, it's 
I'm trying to We've been told this is probably one of the largest so, searches that they've conducted with so much input that it, it's it's a case to be studied for sure. You have a lot of people that are praying and supporting you right now. Was his ask, would he be able to ride a city bus? Um, nothing is off the table as far as abilities. Could the young man get on a bus? I'm sure he could. We've never done it before. We've never rode a city bus, so I don't think he understands the process. Um, he doesn't have any uh, sense of money. He may have, like, let's say a $20 bill in his hand, but he doesn't truly understand what $20 would get him. He's good right. Man, but he doesn't I understand. Time and money. And single mom says, does he want his real father? Maybe I'm just asking. Well, it turns out, single mom, that, you know, he sees his real father every other weekend. And uh, the real father, uh, he is heavily involved uh, in put, this situation put, 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 and is aware. Uh, and he doesn't know where Sebastian is either, correct? Correct. I mean, I can tell you this. His father's very much involved in his life. Yes, very much involved in his life. The relationship between all three of us as parents is not your common one. I mean, me and the father talk on a regular basis. We call each other. We talk, hey, if we heard anything, how's he doing? Is he acting up? Um, wow, we know that going on. This is coming up to eight months now, I believe. Is he? Hang on, February. So March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah. Coming up to eight months. At the end of this week, what are we on? Oh no, we're on the eighteenth. On the twenty-sixth, that's next not this not tomorrow, a week tomorrow. A week tomorrow. Uh he it will be eight months. And we've learned so much since that eight months. But I just want to find that when he says the six. You know, I mean, it's it's not. There's no really animosity in between the parents. That's good. That's good. Discovering the truth. Thank you for being here. They say, did he have any special interest like trains, parks, friends, maybe a school bus route that he loved? My son elopes like and that. loves trains, so he heads to the tracks. He um, playgrounds. Yeah, he loves playgrounds. I mean, he he loves to play. I give him that. Um, friends wise, he wants friends. Sebastian, his idea of his friend is right now is what he has two kids that he talks to at school, but uh -huh. he is extremely socially awkward. And so it's very difficult for him to make friends, uh, which has been this boy's only lifelong dream. If I mean, he, he, Christmas, what do you want for Christmas? I want friends. Birthday, I want friends. Anything that he could do to get a friend, he would love to do it, which is potentially dangerous because that could open up doors if for somebody to say, hey, I'll be your friend and potentially cause harm. Kim Holmes asked if there's any cameras in the area, and I did see, Kim, that they were asking for people that had any ring doorbell footage or any businesses that had camera footage. Talk to us about that, Chris. We did speak about that briefly earlier about the people getting all the footage, but they haven't found anything. Um, our entire neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods have voluntarily and with generosity given up any video footage that they have they've, they've got. I mean, they have let them the the apartments come in and view and monitor um so as far as cameras everybody has turned over everything there's thousands of hours of stuff that they are combing through to try to find an answer it looks like tish is local to the area she said i go to the grocery store or anywhere and our eyes are peeled looking for him i work at a local restaurant and i'm checking cars as they come through the drive through every day bless you tish i know this family is very grateful um Discovering the Truth says, so he probably knows the route to his father's house, so maybe he was in the process of heading in that direction. That, that a, has, yeah, that has not been ruled out. Um, I mean, like I said, the search that they are conducting is extremely widespread and thorough. Mm -hmm. um, so nobody is ruling that out as a possibility. But normally when he wants to go to his dad's, he just says so. And we just call his dad. Yeah, I mean, it's dad will come down here. We meet him halfway. I mean, there's... This he's never wanted to go to his dad's and not been able to go. Let's put it that way. Right. I mean, Marky, was, thank you for being a member for six months. Um, the, all of this is very, very helpful to help us, you know, better understand the situation that we're dealing with. Um, and I did see a post on Facebook that it looked like everybody was asked to wear green on Friday because green is Sebastian's favorite color. Um, what else can you tell us about Sebastian? Um, this, he's an avid Minecraft fan. Um, Loves the color green. 
Um, it's got the goof, the goofiest and quirky smile in the world. I, I don't think I don't think anybody could could um, mimic it. To be honest with you, um, he looks like he's such a sweet young man. He um, loves to dance. That boy can he'll dance his tail off. That's hey, sure. that's there's nothing wrong with that. Dancing is good for you. It's good exercise too. Um, I just really hope they can find some answers. Now, I did ask you guys because, um, you know, I know that sometimes when we're looking for autistic children that go missing, a lot of times people are concerned that they may be attracted to go towards the water. So talk to us about that. Is he is he a good swimmer? Does he like to get in the water? I think you did mention some things about that to me earlier. Um, so he he's a fish in the water. I'm going to tell you right now that he, if there's if but here's the distinction. He is not a child that likes to get dirty. He can't stand his hands dirty. He can't stand bugs. He is fearful of flies and things. So if he swims, he is a pool pool kid. He's not a, I'm a river and a stream kind of kid. He is swimming pool bound. Discovery the truth. I'm sure that they are probably looking into that. Now, I know that you said there was some misinformation that was going around and you wanted to make a clarification. You did tell me that TBI, uh, you know, was assisting, but that there was some confusion. People thought that FBI was actually assisting in this case. Talk to me about um, what you spoke about earlier to me on our phone call about how FBI is uh, that they were consulted um, and the card team, um, you know, was they were, I guess there is a discussion going on as to whether he qualifies um, as, you know, for the child abduction response yeah. team. So he, the FBI is not physically on the ground. Uh, somewhere in, in one of the news clips, I think it was reported that the FBI had made it on the ground. They're not. Um, TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, has reached out to the behavioral analysis team or their CART team. And they are trying to work with them from a distance. Not They're not physically present uh, to help in any way, form, shape that they can render their assistance. Okay. Um, light and sound, thank you for being here. Have burner phones been looked into? I know some teens sneak phones from their parents or maybe his computer use at school to we see if he has been checked. Evidence of a secret phone? Okay, good, good. Because digital evidence is really important. They want to make sure that he's not speaking to anybody. This is such an unusual case. Um, this case is very extremely uh, unusual. Um, like I said before, we are pretty strict when it comes to certain things. Um, as far as comms, communication, electronic devices, mm -hmm. there was only one phone that he had. It was extremely locked down. He had access to his phone, his text message to only his contact list, uh, a camera, and a calculator. And that is it. He's a pretty happy kid, usually. He seems like it. And I know that you love him very much. I know that you, I can remember earlier. Mochi Shimei Bada is a pretty... Happy kid, usually. usually. Was he not a happy child before before he disappeared? Was he not a happy child and that is something happening? Is that why he left? So you say. In our conversation, you, you were referring to him as Bubba. And I that's think that's what I I call my son Bubba also. So that really tore at my heartstrings because my son, he's 30, but he's still Bubba to me. So um, <laughs> it just, that name is going to stick forever. It's just how it is. Cindy Caton, thank you for being here. She says, are there any old wheels that maybe he accidentally fell in or any areas or mines that he, he might be at risk of coming in contact with? I know sometimes those things occur out in Tennessee. Um, the divers, have they... Had they found any possible leads? Um, I know that I heard that there was a possible pond that they were draining. You did tell me they were searching all of the pipes. Yes. So when it comes to uh, to, to address her, her question as far as wells and things, I'm okay. sure there's plenty of those around here. Going to be because I didn't really want to play the whole interview. I just want her. We don't believe in allowing the kids to communicate. And it was his question right now. Um, Shackle Island Road and New Shackle Island Road from the parents or any of the family, you know, um, and I, it's hard for a lot of folks. I mean, there's, I, I will be honest and say this out loud. I have a custody case that is currently going on in another state, uh, which is. I want to 
hey, about platform. Um, so Miranda is a very strong advocate for kids that have special needs and them getting fair and equal treatment. And she says, here he is. Here he is. Chris, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. That's like a Verizon commercial. <laughs> to access it. And I guess that's kind of what they were talking about. For being here, Reckless Ellis says, I'm not saying he did this whatsoever, but I did see a screenshot from Facebook where he yelled at the news and told them to get off his property. Is there any truth to it? Or who? Well, it sounds like there's a lot of people involved, including the mother, the father, the stepfather. Um, if you want to come in here and attack the family, uh, the moderators can show amazing <laughs> I think that's wonderful um let me just take care of something here in chat room and Stag's here Burton thank you so much for coming over he says there's two similar cases a Mississippi autistic teen was missing and found nine days later in Tennessee he walked in Arizona an autistic teen walked approximately 200 miles and was found safe incredible What do you guys think about that? Do you think, Trev, what are your thoughts about that? Do you, well, thank you so much for sending me that. And I will definitely put it for the billboard. Mm. Where you have to look at the home. And that's all they're going to say on that. And the families are entitled to privacy, uh, Ginger Snaps, absolutely. And they are entitled to respect and they will get it in this house. Right. I'm going to stop this because this wasn't the plan for tonight. This was not the plan to go over this video, these lives again. I just wanted to find the one video. I'm not sure. Could it be on the Nancy Grace one? Uh, uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this one. Because I know it's one one of these lives. Right. Let's go forward. No, she just asked you that and you said yes. In another statement you gave, oh, I oh, understand sorry. that the video of the two flashlights, and I'm saying that with air quotes, that's not exactly what that was at all. We now don't believe that two flashlights were observed around your home. Is that correct? Sorry. About that. Very correct. <clears throat> okay. Question regarding your vehicles. Uh, Ms. Proudfoot, what make and model do you drive? I drive... A um, Infinity SUV. So now I've got a new car. Year? 2017. 
And, sir, what do you drive? I drive a uh, diesel truck, Chevrolet. Year? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a 2021, I think. So your Infinity SUV was parked in the garage or outside the garage that night, Ms. Proudfoot? In the garage. In the garage. And Mr. Proudfoot, your vehicle was on location in Memphis. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So there's only one car at the home. Is that right? There was actually a, a work vehicle in a driveway at the time as well, but it hasn't moved. We can't just we can't give out that information because we don't have permission from her work. I don't understand that. What? About the make and model of the vehicle. I have a work van that was also parked in the driveway. Why is that, uh, if it's out in the driveway where people can see it, why is that privileged information? Look at her face. We just don't have permission from her company to divulge that information. Have you asked? But you see, anyone could have drove past your house and got that registration and make a van. You know what I mean? Anyone. So why they couldn't, why they saying they couldn't give that information out, I do not know. Yes, it's a works van, but that didn't make sense to me either. Don't worry. Didn't make sense to anyone, Nancy. Asked? No, ma'am, we have not. Nobody's asked us so that, that question. Was... Okay, so you have a work van. Um, question to you, Ms. Prophet, what do you do for a living? I am an installation technician. Yes, that fits home security alarms and cameras and everything so she knows all about that that night was the work van blocking your driveway could someone go in and out of your driveway the van is parked at the back of my driveway so someone can pull in yes got it do you park your infinity suv in the garage or outside the garage in the garage in the garage do you have a an automatic garage door with the clicker right uh do you leave that up or down at night down could anybody lift it up like is there an on and off button outside or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it you'd have to know the code or have the clicker just right now let's just go back that number okay you may not feel comfortable phoning some county sheriff's office. I don't. I wouldn't be phoning them. But if anyone has any information, please phone Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. That's one eight hundred TBI find. Do not just hold it and think, no, nah, it's not important. Do not give it that information to any other person a YouTuber or anyone else first, give it to them first, then maybe pass it on to uh, Dog, the Bounty Hunter, or whatever whatever he's doing with this case now. And outside, or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it? You'd have to know the code or have the clicker. Does Sebastian know the code? Not to the garage door, but to the man doors. Not to the garage door, but to the house doors? The regular door, yes. So is there a code to get in your home, or do you use a regular key? There's a code. And he knows that code? Yes, ma'am. Question. I I'm just trying to figure out how he would have gotten out or if somebody came into the home. Could they have gotten through the garage door? No, unless they know the code or had the clicker, which they did not. Do you lock your doors at night? Yes, ma'am. Could he have left on his own through those doors? He could, yes, ma'am. But I heard in another interview where Mr. Proudfoot said he was not a, quote, wanderer. He didn't wander around. He never left the home before on his own. Is that right? Correct. We haven't had issues with him running or um, taking off in the past. Okay. Plus, if he had gone out via the garage door because there is a little door next to the big garage doors if you could go out that way and the lights were on over the garage i'm sure 
The kind neighbour across the road would have picked up some movement. You know what I mean? Personally, if I had a neighbour across the road from me whose ring doorbell was literally could pick anyone coming in, up in and out of my house, I would not be happy about that. I'd be saying, can you alter your settings so that it just hits the end of your garden area and does not impede onto my garden area and my front door area. You know what I mean? So, I don't understand how these ring doorbells work. Obviously, I don't. Right. I've got a ring doorbell, but it's not one where it's a car passing would set it off or anything like that. It's where you've got to ring the doorbell and then it sets the video off. Sets it and it comes through on my phone and I can answer it on, answer it on my phone. I can see who's at the door by my phone. Or I don't have to answer it at all and I'll just see it. Boom. Oh, yeah. Delivery, go and pick it up. You know what I mean? But it's not a ring doorbell like their neighbours have. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions regarding the doors. Do you have any home surveillance, anything at all that would have given us an idea or a clue if the door had been opened or not, or a window? Not directly from our house. Well, then from where? Uh, that's what we were hoping that uh, neighborhood ring cameras and may have picked something up. Gotcha. I want to go back to that night. You said you were up till midnight. You were reading something. What were you reading? A chapter for school. A chapter? Yeah, yeah. I read, I know we're swimming are very, we can do three jobs at once. Well, we can. We can look after the children, we can cook, and we can iron at the same time. My mum used to do it. She'd stand in the kitchen and do her ironing, or she'd get the dinner on, stand in the living room, do her ironing, and also keep an eye on seven kids. Right? Which wasn't easy. I've done it. I've stood there ironing while my dinner's cooking and looking at keeping an eye on my two kids. Right? But I, there's no way I'd be able to have a conversation on the phone. Right? While talking to someone on the phone and then also reading. And don't forget she fell asleep. She kept falling asleep. Chapter for school. Are you in school? I was, yes, ma'am. I've since dropped my classes for the time. What are you studying? Business administration. Gotcha. Where do you go to school? DeVry. So that night you go to bed at midnight after you've been talking to Mr. Prophet on the phone. You put the dogs away in a cage, a crate, inside the home, and you go to bed. Did you check on Sebastian at that time? I did not. Okay. Do you normally? Not typically. It, since he's gotten older, I've not been checking on him as frequently throughout the night because normally he's, you know, he's good to go in his room once he goes to bed. Earlier, you had stated you heard a noise in his room before you went to bed. What time was that? Around 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. What did it sound like? Just a thud. A thud. You stated that you said, look, I don't care what you're doing in there. Go to bed. Is that right? I was on the couch, which is near his room. And I said, uh, Bubba, did you fall out of the bed? And he said, no, ma'am. And I said, well, whatever you're doing in there, knock it off and go to sleep. So you heard his voice at 10 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea what the sound actually was? I do not, know. If he were to go out his window, what would he step on? Mulch and um, bushes. Did you say mulch or mush? Mulch. 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 Okay. Got it. Um, has he ever gone out the window before? No, ma'am. Is his home is his room on the front of the house or the back of the house? Front. Front. Do any of your neighbors' ring cams point toward your house? Could they pick that up? 
they do, but um, it's so dark that they can only see it after it gets so dark at night, they can only see certain things where there's light. I thought there were the two lights on. On the opposite side of the house. Okay. Can we talk about Sebastian's shoes? Why are you convinced Sebastian left without shoes on? Or are you? Well, the reason that that came about is because all of his shoes are accounted for inside the house still. Are you positive? I'm positive. How do you know what clothes he was wearing? Well, now I heard the other day that apparently he could have been wearing sliders. Really, how that came from, I don't know. Uh, the clothes that we described are the ones I saw him in when, I, when he went to bed. That morning, you woke up at 6 o'clock. Is that the normal time you wake up? Yes, ma'am. Are you a heavy sleeper? Off and on. Do you take any medication at night that would make you sleep? No, ma'am. I do. But it's you heard work. nothing? I did not, no. So we know he is alive and well at 10 p.m at 6 a.m. He's gone. You say he's never left before. Is that right? Correct. He's never run off before. And I can I confirm where was his bio dad at the time he went missing? I believe he was at work in Nashville. Had there been any family argument or altercation prior to him going missing? No, ma'am. And Mr. Prophet, when did you leave town? Early February. So you had been gone for days before he went missing. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Had you visited home since you left? Are you said from when I initially left? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I came home February 26th, the morning I was told he was missing. From the time that you left for the job in Memphis to February 26th, did you visit the home? Yes, ma'am. When? Uh, I was home. I can't give exact dates. Um, law enforcement has told me not to provide exact dates, Whoa. but I had been home multiple times prior to February. Um, and then I left early February and then didn't come back till February 26th. The morning he was missing. So you were not home from the time you left early February till Feb 26. Is that right? Correct. Me. Where were you living in Memphis? I have an RV trailer that I stay in at an RV park. RV Park. Okay. Following back up on that morning, you search the home as Proudfoot. Then you get in your vehicle and you start searching. Did Sebastian know how to drive? No, ma'am. Was your car in the same location when you woke up that morning as it was the night before? Yes, ma'am. Has your car been searched by police? Multiple times. Yes, ma'am. Uh, have scent dogs looked at your car? Yes, ma'am. So your car is in the same place. You get in the car, you start looking in the neighborhood for him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then you call Mr. Proudfoot, right? I believe I was already on the phone with him at that point. Okay. Question. Who called 911? I did. You did. Yes, what time? Uh, without looking at a call, I can give you the exact time, but on or about uh, 620. And wham, that's what I was looking for. Like, giving the exact, knowing the exact time, get, uh, in and around 620. 620 a.m. Right? Now, by then, she was already in her car looking, driving around. Right, so she gets up at six o'clock in the morning. She goes through, finds Sebastian up there. She has a quick run around the house. Won't take long, really, to walk, get around that house. Phones Chris up about say what? Well, say five past six. Yep, yeah. he's not in the house. I don't know where the he is. He's, you know what I mean? I can't find him. 
she then goes looking around the house again because she's saying, have you looked here, have you looked there? So she's looking in these places. So say so about 10 past 6, because she's on the phone so she can, on her mobile, so she's walking around on her mobile looking around the house. So 10 past 6, she could get looked around that house by then. So within 10 minutes of knowing that her son wasn't there, she's looked around the house twice and phoned her husband. Right? He said, not knowing the exact time, right, give it in and around 6.20. Now, if he said, not knowing the exact time, in and around 6.30, and then I heard on the dispatch call, it said 6.33, I go, well, that's fair enough. You know what I mean? But he says, in and around 6.20. Let's go back. Correct me. Where were you living in Memphis? I have an RV trailer that I stay in at an RV park. RV park. Okay. Following back up on that morning, you search the home as private foot. Then you get in your vehicle and you start searching. Did Sebastian yes. know how to drive? No, ma'am. Was your car in the same location when you woke up that morning as it was the night before? Yes, ma'am. Has your car been searched by police? Multiple times, yes, ma'am. Uh, have scent dogs looked at your car? Yes, ma'am. So your car is in the same place. You get in the car, you start looking in the neighborhood for him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then you call Mr. Proudfoot, right? I believe I was already on the phone with him at that point. Okay. Question. Who called 911? I did. You did. Just what me. time? Uh, without looking at a call, I can give you the exact time, but on or about uh, 620. On or about 620. And had you guys been talking on the phone before 6 a.m. or did you initially call Mr. Proud? But at the time you realized Sebastian was gone. I called him when I realized Sebastian was gone. Have you guys been out looking for Sebastian? Right. Don't need to hear no more. I've heard what I wanted to hear. In and around 6.20. Without looking at the call logs, in and around 6.20 a.m. On that dispatch call that we listened to the other night, they said, when was the call, when did the call come through? And the dispatch, the dispatcher said 6.33. Well, I know for a fact that uh, someone posted a picture of the opening and closing times of Sumner County Sheriff's Office. And it said 8 a.m. open, and I think it was about 4.35 p.m closing so if, you, if he phoned the sheriff's office direct at 6 20 there's going to be no one there so it'll automatically they just switch it so hit the switch at their end to any calls that come in to automatically go to dispatch right that's how dispatch got the call at 6 33 but why would it take 13 minutes for him to phone the sheriff's office up and then for the sheriff's office to transfer the call over to dispatch. It wouldn't. It wouldn't take that long. You'd probably get a message, the office is not opening at the moment. Your call will be transferred to, you know what I mean? Literally five minutes at the most. So say 25 past 6. It's still another 8 minutes before dispatch gets a call. No. He phoned at 6.33. Not 6.20. He phoned at 6.33. That's when the call went through to dispatch at 6.33. So say he phoned at 6.30. And then the call got put through to dispatch at 6.33. 
Why did it take them so long to phone anyone, to phone law enforcement, to phone the sheriff's office, anyone? She was obviously on the phone to him by, what, five past six, ten past six, the very latest. So why did it take them so long to phone law enforcement? What was they doing? She was driving around for a while. So what was she doing? And why did he take so long to phone law enforcement? When she says in her own words, she jumped in her car and she went driving around. She went up by the school, she went around the neighbourhood, and yet the neighbourhood people have said she didn't go looking around the neighbourhood. She went up by the school, and it takes approximately, what, that time in the morning? Six, ten past six in the morning? I'd say about, what, three minutes to go up to that school in a car? Three to five minutes? And then add on to that the fact that there were several witnesses who saw Kathy Barrasok's car outside that marketplace opposite the school. Right? And I will show you it on Google Earth. Right, so why did it wait till like half six or so to phone law enforcement? No way did he phone them at 20 past six. There's no way we are. Let's share this. That's his school. Right. That's where he lived. So you come down, down here. Wham, there's the school. Right? Now, it's on the school security camera that she drove past the school. But does it show whether she come out this way and go that way? Or did she come out this way and go back that way? Or... Did she go up this way, around, yep, to here, and now I'm going to go in. Right, and you come out here, there are the storage units, I've got to, have to click there, don't I, that's the thing with this one, I have to click on, right, There's the storage units. This, it was... Oh God. Here's the store. Right, there's the store that people said they saw. And it's not... People know each other in that area. You know what I mean? 
So, I could only stand your phone one person. I'm sure I saw Kathy Barasok's car there, but it wasn't. It was several people said they saw her car there. Round here somewhere. Right? And just here is the storage units. I'm wondering, did they check these storage units? Were they all contact? Did they contact every owner of these storage units and ask them if they could search their storage units? Because we know for a fact they didn't go to that shop. The police didn't go to this store. That store till two weeks after he went missing. And by then, the video had started re... I started re uh, filming over the top. So they had no evidence to say if Kathy's car was there or not. So what my question is, she was in her car by, say, 10 past 6. No way did he phone the police at 20 past 6. It does not take 13 minutes for a call to get transferred from the uh, sheriff's office over to dispatch. It doesn't. It would automatically be transferred over because the office is shut. Sheriff's office is shut at that time in the morning, so it automatically gets transferred directly over to dispatch. So, once again, why did it take them so long to phone the police? If she was in the car, driving around, she said she was in the car and they was on a, 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 a three-way call and he told her to put herself on mute. Yeah? Why would he tell her to put herself on mute? And B, again, why take so long to phone the police? He's just said, um, that Nancy, I knew I heard it somewhere on the Nancy Grace interview. Not looking at the time log, but give it a, in, around about, around, in and around 6.20 a.m. But we know the dispatch caller said the call came through at 6.33. It does not take 13 minutes for... And then they said themselves, uh, with, with the minutes of phoning the law enforcement, the police were there. Yeah, because they didn't get the call. The call came through at 6.33. Dispatch put the call out to a certain police then to go and attend. So they would have got there about, what, 6.33, 6.35, around about 6.40, 6.45. 10 minutes, within 10 minutes at the most. They'd have been there by 6.45. She was already back at the house by 7. Right? Because the neighbour saw her and spoke to her outside. She was going to taking her kids to school at 7. And she saw her outside and Katie said, her son was missing. He would not he left the house between twelve and six AM that morning. And this is where she told the neighbour, this is why I don't take everything for fact. This is why this is where she told the neighbour she heard the thud about eleven thirty. She was in the kitchen and she heard the thud. About 11.30. Hmm. But you said you heard it at 10. And when anyone asks Chris 
Wow, they don't talk no more. They've gone mute. Right, when anyone asks Chris about that flood, he will not answer it. Why? He was on the phone to her at half, well, quarter to ten. At ten o'clock, she heard that thud. So surely you will have heard her shout through to Sebastian. Um, don't know what you do. Uh, was that you falling out of bed again, Bubba? No. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but you best get to sleep. Right? Why can't you just say that? Yeah, I heard her shout through to Sebastian, telling him to go to sleep. But he doesn't. He will not answer nothing on that thud. Why? And you can't say it's because he wasn't there. Because he was on the phone to her. He would have heard her call through to Sebastian. So why can't he tell us about that? Why won't he answer that question? He will not answer that question. And that thought didn't come into, oh, until about, I think it was Chronicles of Olivia interview. That's when the thought came into it. Before, it was like, I went to bed at 9 o'clock, I went to bed at 12, went in at 6 a.m. He was missing. The thought or any noise didn't come into it until... Round about, I think it was on, so they did the Duchess interview on the 3rd, they did the Newsreel one on the 4th, or oh, something like that, maybe the 2nd, because they don't put their videos straight out, they edit it and everything, so maybe in the 2nd or the 3rd, I don't know, but we know Duchess interview was on the 3rd. And then the interview with the news person came out on the 4th. And then, did they do another interview with someone? I know they did Chronicles of Olivia, but I'm sure there was another interview they did with another YouTuber before Chronicles of Olivia. I know they did Smiley's, but I'm sure there was another one before then. I know Duchess did another one with them, but I'm sure there was another one before that second interview with Duchess. I'm sure there was. Right? But that doesn't bother me. The interviews, how many they done, does not bother me. What was bothering me is the fact that he said in and around 620 he phoned the police. Police office, law, uh, sheriff's office is shut at that time. So, that call would have been transferred direct to dispatch. Right? And then dispatch would have got whoever out there to their home. So, why did they, that call did not come through till 6.33? What was going on between the time she phoned Chris at, say, 5 past 6? to 6.30, because that, I'd say, is about the time he probably phoned, about 6.30, by the time he phoned the sheriff's office, got transferred to dispatch, about 6.33. She was already in a car, I keep saying this, she was already in a car at like 10 past, quarter past six. She was back at the house by seven. Don't know what time she got back to the house, but it's back at the house by seven. Because a neighbour saw her. Right? And the other big question is, why are his parents, his mother and his stepfather, well, the mother, saying she wasn't there in the morning? When we know she was, because when... Chris got there, Seth got there, after around about eight, quarter past eight in the morning. Kathy, by the socks, was already there. They was outside. 
or something. You know what I mean? So why does Kathy Barrisox say she wasn't there at that time in the morning? She was. Oh God, we've got some nice weather. As I was saying earlier, let's took my grandson for his birthday to the steer farm. Lovely place, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And it's been horrible weather all day. So I'm hoping the rain didn't get over there. I'm hoping they had a nice few hours. But I bet you it didn't, I bet you it rained. Anyway, forget about that. So now you know, on this channel you've heard him say, on my channel you can say you heard on this channel through the Nancy Grace interview that he said in and around 6.20am he phoned law enforcement. He phoned the sheriff's office. We know for a fact the sheriff's office does not open. Hold on, I'll see if I can pull it up. Right, let's see. I might be wrong. That post that woman put up might be wrong. Let's see what this says. Right. Let's see what it says on their Facebook page. So right, I, I've got a drain in my balcony. It's from the uh, roof because this used to be an open balcony. And my cat is sitting on the table and you can hear the water running down the drain. Right, let's have a look see what time. Uh, Tell her to just say, Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, time. Right, open closes 4.30pm. Doesn't say what time it opens. Uh, I'm trying to find what time it opens. Here it is. Here it is. One. Hours. 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through to Friday. 
but it doesn't give a time for the weekend. But this was Monday morning. So, 8 a.m. Wham. So, if he phoned Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 6.20, like he says, in and around 6.20, he will have been redirected. Any call going to that office before 8 a.m. will have been redirected straight to the dispatch. Right? Straight to the dispatch. So, no way does it take, if you phone at 6.20, no way does it take 30 13 minutes to phone and get dispatch, uh, put through, direct, re, recall, relocated or whatever, push through to the dispatch. Just not take 13 minutes, maybe three minutes, but not 13. So I say it wasn't 620, this is just my opinion. I say it was 6.30, because the call came through at 6.33, which is about the right time, I'd say, by the time you phone the sheriff's office, and the office is closed at the moment, you will be redirected to, you know what I mean? Please down the line, you will be redirected to, and they will have automatically been redirected to the dispatcher. It does not take 13 minutes. I don't, I cannot believe it will take 13 minutes for a call to be redirected to, from the sheriff's office to the dispatcher. If that is the case, then something is seriously wrong. 13 minutes. Oh, so that's in my opinion. I say he phoned at 6.30. So what was they doing? From what, 10 past 6 in the morning when she probably got in a car to drive around to 6.30 when he phoned the police. That's a 20 minute gap there. From 6am to 10 past 6, you got the looking around the house, couldn't find him. Phoning her husband then Chris saying, and she's on the phone and he's saying, have you looked there? So she goes and looks there. Have you looked there? So she goes and looks there. So by 10 past 6, she's in her car. What happened to that 20 minutes? Because even if she got in her car at 10 past 6, yeah? And he's, and that door call come through at 6.20. What hap- why would it take 10 minutes to make a phone call to the police? Your son is missing. Why did it take so long for them to make that phone call? We know on the dispatch call it said 6.33. We can see here the office is shut at 8am to 4.30 Monday to Friday. We don't know what time it's open on a weekend. We don't even know if it is open on a weekend. It doesn't say anything about it. Weekend times. Didn't say anything. So it's probably not even open on the weekends. So all calls on the weekends would go just straight, go straight through to dispatch. But I'm not on about the weekend. I'm on about the Monday. So there's no way he phoned law enforcement up at 20 past 6. No way, in my opinion, because it wouldn't take 13 months to redirect that call through to, to dispatch. It wouldn't. No, no, I don't care what anyone says, it wouldn't take that long. And if it does, then I'll be saying, well, what the hell is going on in our place? If I live there, I'd be going, 13 minutes to redirect a call to dis- dispatch. That's not on, that's wrong, that's life. That is life threatening. You could be on the phone wanting an ambulance and whatever your your husband fell over, your child fell over and bashed his head. You know what I mean? 
You could need an ambulance and it's going to take 13 minutes for them to read your record. No, it's not going to happen. So I say between 10 past 6 and 20 past 6, that is 20 minutes. What were they doing in like 20 minutes? She was on the phone to him. Because he said when he phoned her law enforcement, he told her to go on mute, to mute her phone. So if he phoned at 6.30, she's still in her car. Right? He then goes back to her and goes, the police are coming, get back home. Wow, well, I'm sorry, but she's done whatever she had to do in that 20 minutes. So, yeah, she had plenty of time to get back home. So where was she? Where did she go after leaving the school? Because it don't take 20 minutes to drive to the school and back. It does not take 20 minutes. Let's see how long it will take. Alright, let's get my this. No, I'm what am I doing? Let's come back. Oh. Right. I need to no, go off. Right. Uh, let's have a look. Mm-hmm. View add tools. Most means no. Mm-hmm. No, I can't do it on this one. I can do it. I don't know how this one works. Right, but I can do it on the other one. Google Google Maps. I can get the distance and the time. I can get the distance. I just can't figure out the time. But I know it doesn't take that long. Right, just not take that long to get along here. Okay, I'll go off. Right, what am I doing? Come back out, can't you? Oh. Just not take that long to get along this road. Get off. The, why my screen keep going like that? Right, lax the school entrance. Oh, no, I'm not facing the right way, so let's have it all gone. What is going on? Um, just not take. 20 minutes to get to that school and back. From there, oh, come on, why won't it turn? No, okay, I'm coming out of this. Just do my head in. Do my head in. Right, but just not take 20 minutes from the house to the school and back. Sorry, it doesn't. So what, what, what was happening from the moment she got in her car round about, say, 10 past 6? Because she doesn't state what time it was. She doesn't say, I got in the car, it was about quarter past 6, whatever. She doesn't say nothing like that. She said, I jumped in my car. I started driving around, I went, drove around the area, and I went up by the school, but by the time I got to the school, he was already, and she stopped what she was saying, did this hand action round by her throat. He was what? He was what, Katie? He was what? By the time you got up to the school, he was what?
This is why a common scam why law enforcement have not pushed it on these points. Like what we've said, seen in these videos. He was what, Katie? You said on a live, on a YouTube channel, that you drove around the area and you went up to the school and by the time you got to the school, he was... Who was? Who's he? He was what? Why don't they push her on these questions? And that's when Chris did that. <coughs> and she's got... Um, and, and she's trying to get back then, and she's got angry, and she's got a three fingers, a one, a three way phone call. She had to get back on track. So, where, what? That's what I want to know. He was what, Katie? And why did it take, what, 20 minutes for you to phone law enforcement? For you to phone to get help to find your son. What? What is more important that you had to do before you phoned law enforcement? Please tell me. Because I'm just dumbfounded by it all. Because as I said, it does not take 13 minutes for a call to get transferred from sheriff's office to dispatch. It takes minutes. Minutes. If that. A minute maybe. So he phoned at 6.30 and he got the dispatch call. The call came through to dispatch at 6.33. Remember that time? 6.33. 33. Remember these times I'm showing here. How the office was shut till 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. So if he had phoned at 6.20, he had been redirected directly to dispatch. So. So it doesn't make sense that there's a, in my opinion, there's a 20 minute gap. There's at least, at bare minimum, 20 minute gap. Maybe 15, but definitely between 10 past 6 and 20, half past 6, there's that gap. From when she phoned him at 5 past 6 to when she got in the car around about 10 past 6. Because she'd already ran around the house the second time, and by then she's getting in the car. So what time, and another thing is, what time was she up? Did she get up and have a shower first and get dressed before going to, and waking Sebastian up at six? Right? I know I would if I was a mother. Right? And I had to go to work. I'd get myself up first and get myself showered and dressed. Then go and wake my children up. Get them sorted off and off to school, and then go to work. But we don't hear nothing like that. She, like, she could have said, "Well, I got up at half five and, and I was getting myself ready, I had a shower and got myself dressed, and then at six o'clock I went through to wake Sebastian." She didn't say nothing like that. She just said she got up at six a.m., went through to wake him up, and he wasn't there. Well, in fact, in one interview, she. Went in and woke him up, and he was gone. Went in and woke him up, and he was gone. Mm. Well, he wouldn't be there, would he? Because something was going on around your house at th around about three thirty that morning. Lights, mysterious lights. And I think Seth even knows now that that was in a, what they showed him was a trash truck. But those lights, they didn't show him them lights. They showed him the lights of the trash truck, coming, the garbage truck, coming through. At whatever time it come through, at 5, 5.30 a.m. So, I'll let you look ponder on that. So, if you're watching on replay, think about that time. 
came from when she phoned him at side 10 past 6. Well, side 5 past 6 she phoned him. 10 past 6 she was in the car. Side quarter past 6 even. There's still a 15 minute window. Because there's no way to defund the law enforcement to 20 past 6. I don't care what he says. He didn't phone them at 20 past 6. Because it does not take 13 minutes to transfer a fucking call to, to, to dispatch. And if it does, then there's something seriously wrong with the, the system in Tennessee. Because you could have a child in eating ambulance and it's going to take 13 minutes to transfer you through to dispatch to get an ambulance. No, not going to happen. So please think about that. Think about that time from when she phoned him around about five past six to when she got in her car then said about ten past six, quarter past six. There's a 15 to 20 minute maximum, 20 minutes, but there's a, there's a gap. There's that gap because I'm telling you now, he did not phone at 20 past t- six. He did not phone at 20 past six. Right, show us the call log. Okay, Chris, show us the call log of where you've called the sheriff's office at 20 past 6. You show us that, I'll shut up about this time. Give us receipts that you called that office, that sheriff's office at 20 past 6. That's why he wasn't happy about that dispatch call being out. You heard it in his voice when someone mentioned it. He was not happy about that dispatch call being leaked out. Because it showed the actual time he phoned at 6.33 and not 6.20 a.m. Right, I can now go to bed tonight and sleep quite easily tonight now. Knowing that, yes, I'm right. There's a gap. There is a gap of. Minimum, I'd say minimum 15 minute gap, maximum 20 minute gap between 10 past, quarter past to half past six in the morning. Anyway, I am going to leave it at that for now because I've done how many lives? How many lives have I done today? This is my third live today, so. Look, I haven't even put. Oh, what am I doing? I haven't even put this up. I haven't even put my little banger up going across the bottom. I'm not with it today. I've been so busy. But I'm so determined to find that video, that interview where it says 6.20. Do your own research, okay? Do your own. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Look at, listen to the dispatch call. Listen to that interview with Nancy Grace. Look at the times the officer opens. And come and tell me I'm wrong. Please. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll admit it. Okay, I'm wrong. I have no qualms about being wrong. But summer isn't sitting right. And that window, that 15 minute window, 15 to 20 minute window is not, you know. She was back at the house by 7 a.m. As I said, a neighbor who was taking her children to school saw her outside and she spoke to her. Asking her if everything was what was wrong, is everything okay? And that's when Katie said her son was missing. He went to bed at nine o'clock. She went in to wake him up at six o'clock this morning and he was gone. She heard her thought about eleven thirty, she told him I bet, but I don't know. But now it's coming out that apparently he could have been wearing sliders, right? And Apparently, another YouTuber doing a bit of research, a bit of gigging, 
found out that he was off work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're telling me he never come home one day that in those four days. He never come back to that house in four days. Never come back to that house in four days. I think he did. I think he did. I think he was there on Sunday night. When they got back from the restaurant, he was in the house. Perhaps his car wasn't there, but he was there. Or, perhaps he wasn't in the house. He was at his somewhere else. He could have been elsewhere. Don't forget, we got the two lights. The lights coming from the house. Over to another person who's got a light, a torch or something, across the back coming area. We've got the car that has been pulled up, waits around for a few minutes and reverses back out. And around the corner and then drives out of Kelling Lane. We've got all that activity going on around about 3.30 in the morning. Then it goes to work at 5.15 in the morning. Doesn't sound no one that he's just had a phone call at 5 past 6 that morning that his stepson is missing. He goes to work, climbs up that crane, sits in his little cab and he... The only reason he come home was because the ground manager, the site manager, pulled him off the crane because of his attitude to the staff, the workers below. Right? He pulled him off the crane at 11 o'clock. That's when he marched out of that site, got in his car and came home. At 11, because 11 to 12, 12 to 1... Oh, no, it couldn't have been 11, because he was home, he said he was home by 1.30, 11 to 12, 12 to 1. That's only two and a half hours, it's three and a half hours from his work's home. So it must have come off between 10, unless he's putting his foot down in anger. You know what I mean? I wonder if it hadn't been for the site manager pulling him off that tower at 11 o'clock. 11, uh, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, I say 10, because that makes the time right. So if it wasn't for that site manager pulling him off that crane at, say, 10 or 11 in the morning, would he have come home? Or would he have stayed at work? Knowing his stepson was missing, knowing he just had that nice, not so nice conversation with his wife on the phone about their stepson being missing at five past six that morning. And yet he still went and did his work. Summer isn't right. There's that time gap between when she found, found him missing, phoned uh, Chris, and when the phone call came through to dispatch. There's a 15 to 20 minute time difference. Well, actually, it's more than 20 minutes. If, if say, he, uh, she got in a car at say, 10 past 6 and was driving around by then, and the call didn't come through to 6.33, so it's like, uh, yeah, I'd say 20 minutes, because it takes a, through, a few minutes to get through for them to... And then you get the call divert. So yeah, about six thirty. So say twenty minutes. Give him, give him those three minutes. So between ten past and quarter past six to half past six that morning is when he made that phone call at half past six because it came to work six thirty-three. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm doing it because there's something seriously wrong. The times aren't matching. The times aren't right. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to leave that now. So please, if you like what you've heard and seen, please like this video, please share this video. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about that time. From when she phoned him in the morning to when the dispatch call came to her at 6.33.
What was going on in that time? Where was she? For 20 minutes. Where was she? We know it don't take that long to get to the school and back. So where was she? Anyway, I'm going to leave you all there. I'm going to say good night. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching my videos. I do appreciate you all for being here and watching my videos with me. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Just help with the analytics, I believe. That's what I keep hearing people say. Right? Please give it a like. And until Saturday tomorrow, I'll be back tomorrow. Don't know what I'm talking about tomorrow. It might be some. No, I doubt if it be anything to do with Eliza Vu now, because they've just had their bail hearing today, and I think next thing is Monday. It's something to do with Eliza Vu. Um, I don't know what I'll be talking about. I might just have a night off. I'll see. See if anything comes out. Anyway, so until then, good night. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate you. Can't say enough. Stay safe. So instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help, I had to do it all myself.